One, two, one, two, three. We're, we're ready, ready, willing, able, and we're destined for success. We felt the cause of action for the mighty Lex Express. The stars and stripes were flying high. We heard the angels sing. The Lex Express man go go Zuna through the wrestling ring. You body slammer around the world won everybody's boat. It almost knocked the hole right through the bottom of the boat. Yo, we're ready, willing, able, and we're destined for success. We felt the call to action for the mighty Lex Express. For purple mountain majesty from sea to shining sea. Yokozuna sponsor are less than they're cracked up to be. Mr. Fuji couldn't cut it, so they got Jim Cornette. By the time Luca's done, they'll be easy to forget. Now SummerSlam is coming to the home of Bill and Beer. And many other Pistons who are really gonna cheer. When Big Fat Yokozuna, who is on a roll, I guess, gets a mega motel welcome from the Mighty Lex Express. We're ready, willing, able, and we're destined for success. We felt the call to action for the Mighty Lex Express. Let's crystal gear. Welcome to Pillow Talk, episode 12. It's your boy, Franklin. I'm back with Uncle Howard. A lot of people speculated he was gone, but what's give, fill him in, Howard. Fill him in. Yeah, 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 whatever. Listen up. I had some problems with my computer. Who cares? No big deal. The important news here is that I was stabbed clear in the back, right in through the back, and my spine came out through my chest all the way back down into my nuts. Terrible scene by my dingus damn idiot nephew named, uh, what's your name? I don't even care anymore. Don't matter to me. Your name's Frederick or something, right? <laughs> it's Franklin Lombardo. Uh, it's as far as I'm concerned, your name is Mud. <laughs> oh, God. What are you upset about? You messed up your own laptop with some Mike's Hard Lemonade. My Mike's Hard Lemonade. No, no. You know what messed it up? It was the fact that it was my Mike's Harder Lemonade that you spilled on the laptop. And it was a no-go. And you know what? We're not going to share a mic because that's dumb. Who does that? So I had to I had to get in some suitable replacements, and I thought they did a good job. A uh, good job, hell! I guess you think that uh, Mark Henry did a good job reading a poem the day after uh, Owen Hart died, because that's the same thing that you had going on. But I'm the Owen Hart. <laughs> you are not the Owen Hart. You're alive and well, and Mark Henry did do a good job. The show Henry's must <laughs> not go on. <laughs> you th- you are comparing your laptop not working. To the Owen Hart tragedy when he fell from the top of Kemper Arena. I, I think you're right. That is a ridiculous comparison to make when you put it that way. Uh, obviously, my situation was significantly better. <laughs> okay. I'm glad you, we can find some common ground here. They did a good job. Anyway, <laughs> here at Pillow Talk, we always pick a movie before we go to bed. Because we do this... Live from our king size bed for two kings, and we always watch a movie. So, what are we watching tonight, Uncle Howard? What do you got on tap? Well, I'm picking a movie that I actually just had the pleasure of seeing for the first time not too long ago. It came out in the year 2000 and stars a young Kirsten Dunst as a cheerleader with a heart of gold and a spirit of a tiger. It's called Bring It On, and if you haven't seen it, absolutely five star film. And Gabrielle Union. Gabrielle Union. Uh, Eliza Dushku. Yeah, Eliza Dushku. Eliza, are you part of the Douche Crew on <laughs> Facebook? I am a proud. I'm one of the founding members of the Douche Crew. You won't hear about that in the history books, though. No. <laughs> Uncle Howard, a founding member of the Douche Crew. When was it founded? Well, there, the new the, millennium. The it's new millennium. <laughs> it was founded in 1999, but uh, it didn't really get going until about mid-2000. Right around the time of the new guy, the movie I'm selecting because I'm what? also second generation douche crew. <laughs> now, that's not douche as in, I mean, I hope people could be more mature on, you know, our fan base is a mature fan base. It's, you know, D-U-S-H, you know, crew, not not douche crew. I, you know, I didn't even, the thought that didn't cross my mind that somebody would be that gross about it, but, you know, you know, it's, 
We're fa- we're mem- you're a founding member, you know. I'm a you know what's it? Uh, I'm a legacy member of the douche crew, you know. That's I'm a right, legacy. That's- Right. I am a platinum member, of course. I have selected a, a, a lifelong giving uh, a, a program to her uh, her organization. You donated. You wait, let me clarify what you did. You tried to cash app Eliza some money in hopes in exchange for photographs, suggestive photographs. You you're not. A, you're not a patron saint donating to a cause, Howard. I can clearly see the messages you sent her. And I, I went to very, very long and strenuous means to get her Venmo. <laughs> and, and when I did, I sent her a pretty little morsel of a coin. <laughs> What emojis did you use in your uh, <laughs> Eliza Dushku uh, Venmo? Venmo? Yeah. Well, I'm what glad What emojis? You're... The peach? I, I did not use the peach. <laughs> you and know what I... the peach means, right? No, tell me. It's a butt. It's a butt. Yeah. Well, then I finally know what they mean when they say I can eat a peach for hours. <laughs> or that's, that's a saying? Yeah, I think so. I believe <laughs> Where's Nicholas that a saying? In, in Georgia? Off. <laughs> Georgia. Sorry. That's right. Christly country. Uh, Georgia. Uh, uh, Georgia on my mind, the theme song from uh, Designing Women. Yeah, I've never seen it. But uh, anyways, the new guy, I think, is what we're going to go with. It stars young DJ Quails, uh, the, one of the first people we've spoken about. It and is, you know what? It kind of goes about uh, the first episode. It we'll all comes a full circle. Eliza. Yeah, it all comes full circle here at Pillow Talk. And DJ Quills was the new guy in a high school. He was a nerd before. He had nerd friends. Do you know who one of his nerd friends was? Tell me. Zoe Deschanel. What? Yeah. Have you, you haven't seen the new guy? No. Now, he got advice from uh, a young Eddie. Is it Eddie Griffin or Eddie Griffith? Eddie Griffin, I believe. Eddie Griffin. So he got advice from, you know, the undercover brother and, you know, Deuce Bigelow's friend. You know, I think those are all the same, play the same characters. Very United similar. Universes. Yeah. So he got some advice from a man in jail, uh, played by Eddie Griffin. But it wasn't, so Eddie Griffin played a man in jail, but he wasn't playing himself, the man Eddie Griffin. Eddie Griffin's just the actor, and he portrayed somebody who was in jail. Did, was he the guy who says, you just got knocked the fuck out? Uh, that is uh, Chris Tucker. Okay. So, so is he... But again, I have to emphasize, Eddie Griffin is an actor who played somebody in this movie, just like DJ Quails. So that's, that's kind of how... He playing a role. Yeah, that's, that's how acting in Hollywood things work. That's, you know, a lot of people don't know that, you know? But uh, just straight... In, yeah, setting the record straight there. And uh, I guess the movie's a- a- about... Actors are liars. Actors are liars, yes. So if I can continue about the new guy, it's really interesting. You know, Please. I thought I could pull this off, but you know, I never changed high schools. But uh, guy was a nerd in one school. Eddie Griffin teaches him how to be cool, and then he does become cool. And guess who else takes uh, is is approving of young DJ Quails being this new cool badass at school? Paul Walker. Close. The O'Connell brothers. All of them? Both of them. <laughs> all two of them. All two of them. You're right then. Yeah, all two of them. And you know what? They, they accept uh, him as a cool guy. And you know what happens later on? The new guy, he's no longer cool with his old nerdy friends. He dismisses them when he sees them at the record shop for Eliza Dushku. So, wow. Yeah, but it turns out she liked him for him, even if he was a nerd. And... It's a beautiful sentiment, that movie. So. Yeah, that's important because today, more than ever, nerds are having a hard time getting along in society. Yeah, I mean, but they are nerds, so that's, you also have to look at it from it, that perspective. It's the only bigotry that's acceptable. <laughs> Hating nerds, yeah. Yeah. They, they are a marginalized group. I'm, you know. They're marginalized, and let's keep them that way. Let's keep them that way, right? <laughs> We have a no nerds policy on this show. No nerds. No allowed. nerds and no nanas. No nanas. Yeah, this ain't your nanas podcast. You know, your nanas probably out there listening to the Doughboys, talking about Nick Weiger. 
And we have no issue with the Doughboys. Mike Mitchell's great. There's the other ones, fine. How but. could you? How could you have an issue with something that's so bland and uninteresting? <laughs> oh God. <laughs> Good God. Are we important hey. enough yet for backlash? <laughs> Are we I, important enough yet for backlash? No, but it doesn't matter because they don't have anyone to backlash against us with. <laughs> they have a real fan base. <laughs> yeah, their fan base of no one. <laughs> <laughs> hey, yeah, uh, exactly. hey, Frank, Franklin, though, I, can, can we get into some uh, – this, is, this isn't really business for the listeners at all. But, uh, okay. Hey, I, I, I got this phone call the other day. Uh, it was from the Nickelodeon people. What? Why would Nickelodeon call our house? They said uh, they said that uh, now that this uh, this this cat Jack Allison's got the big big uh, Allison thing going on. The big Jack. It got interest renewed in the Big Help, and they were going through their records, and they said uh, they said uh, there was an irregularity with you, and they wanted you to call them back. Got a phone number. Oh, oh no, an irregularity. Yeah. They think. Uh, oh boy. Oh what? boy. What? What? I don't, what? Uh, you know, a few years ago, Howard, I. Uh, I wanted to talk to uh, Larissa Olenek on the, uh, she was in the Big Help, 1995 or 94. Sure. You remember her, you know? E- everyone does. Everybody does. So, uh, you know, I wanted to speak with her, so I kept calling and don- pledging, it, pledging these hours, you know? And, you know, some tel- telethons you pledge money, and this one you pledged hours. So uh, I kept pledging hours until I got on the phone with somebody, uh, but I got, uh, you know, Danny Marshall Cooksey. Darling. Yeah. You know, yeah, Cl- Clarissa's dad, and he's like, Wow, sport! Yeah, you called in a bunch. You pledged a lot of hours. I really appreciate it. What's your name, kid? And you know, so oh, Franklin. But uh, that was young Franklin. Not now. Now I'm cool, Franklin. Now I'm just like, yeah, hey, I'm Franklin. I'm cool. But uh, yeah, I I got to speak with Clarissa's dad. I want to talk to you know Larissa Olenek. But uh, in the process, I pledged uh, you know. A uh, whopping 103 hours that I have not done. And, uh, well, I, uh, that's a, not good. A man's only as good as his word. As <laughs> well, I, how am I supposed to fulfill these? Uh, how, how do they keep track? How, do, how is this happening? Well, Why'd you the, answer the phone? You missed half the calls I really need. I was expecting it was going to be someone else who was calling for me. Oh, okay. I know we're using the phone again. I mean, Night Flirt. Nightflirt.com. Nightflirt.com. I've been talking to this guy named Big Aiden. Big Aiden? Yeah. <laughs> Big, oh, good grief. Good grief. You good, know what? I don't care what you guy. Good guy. He's out at Coral Naples. <laughs> oh, is he? Yeah. So he's got some money then. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh. Well, that I can't blame. Look, you know, if you are, you know, having phone sex with people of money who live right by us, then more power to you. But uh, we need to stay under the radar from Nickelodeon. Don't answer the phone anymore, Howard. I would really appreciate that. Uh, we got questions, actually. I, back back to the real things that uh, matter for the show. We got questions from our Then we got our answers. What's up? Then we got answers. Yeah, there we go. You got questions, we got answers. So, Uncle Howard, uh, at Modesty Contest, it wants to ask Ugh. you, are you run? <laughs> what are you groaning? <laughs> What's your deal? I don't know about this guy. Seems like a great guy. He Probably wants to know is. if you're running for mayor. He's heard some rumors. Well, that's accurate. In fact, I am running for mayor. I'm glad that he uh, asked me that. I was looking for a platform to publicly announce it, and uh, until now I had only considered Sparrows. <laughs> I, I am running for mayor, and it is my privilege and my honor to stand before you as your future Fort Myers City Mayor. Wow. What do I, What is the platform that I'm running on? It's simple. It's three little things. One... No more bands. <laughs> no more bands? No more bands. What is that, like music bands? Rock bands? B-A-N-S. No, no more bands. No more bands. Like what kind of bands? Anything. Nothing is banned. Nothing is banned. Fort Myers. No laws. <laughs> no laws? <laughs> My second platform, there is one law. <laughs> women, women have to wear open toe shoes. Oh Lord, good grief, good <laughs> grief! Open-toed shoes. Open-toed shoes. You can't wear Nikes or New Balances or anything like that. 
You can if they're slides. <laughs> God. Wow. Well, this is a hell of a platform. What's the third and final uh, thing you're standing on here that you're running on? Michelob Ultra. You know it. <laughs> I've heard of it, yes. Ever thought there's a reason that can't just be city water running <laughs> oh, out of the tap? <laughs> there we go. Well, it is watered-down beer, so you, you just love those Michelob Ultras, huh? I put them down like they, they're bottles of water with a thimble full of beer in them. Okay. Well, Michelob Ultra, open-toed shoes, and no laws. Well, except well, one law. I mean, no what? bands. No bands. Okay, hey. No bands. No bands. <laughs> All right. So, if you if you ran for mayor, what what do you think you'd be running about there? Well, I would require women to, uh, uh, by law, if you ask them for your email, they have to give it to you. <laughs> I would need some kind of disclosure. You know, for the sake of transparency, if people want the government to be transparent, then women should be more transparent and, you know, willing to hear a guy out if he asks for an, an email. Because a lot oh. of women... I'd love to see a transparent woman. Okay, okay. I didn't, I'd like you know. to see her right through her. Oh, lordy. Good right God. behind her. <laughs> Good God. Anyways, I, I don't know what else I would really stand for, but I would like, you know, I'd just like women to give me a chance. I think, I think I'm okay. I'm one of the good guys, you know? You're, I'm one of the you're good very guys. polite. You're, yeah. well, you're well spoken. Thank you. Uh, all right, our boy Teach, good guy. Yeah, what's up, dude? <laughs> you were telling me the other day that you think he, you said, in your words, not my words, your words, isn't he a, I'm not even going to say it. Is he a sex black? Sex freak? No, you said he's a black, right? Oh, he's That's the one who's the black, not the sex freak one. I, I, I've wondered that a lot because I can tell that, he, that he's well-spoken himself. <laughs> oh, Lord. <laughs> now that's racist. When you said it that way, now that's racist. <laughs> Anyways, Teach says, what is our favorite public restrooms to, I hate to say it, but to take a dump in? That's crude, vulgar, and I don't much respect it. I now think you're a white guy, Teach. <laughs> I, my my answer, it's no longer a place that you can go. Just like the beautiful dinosaurs that once existed were hunted out of existence by the white man. My answer is borders. <laughs> wow, that that's a good answer, actually. Borders was bar none the number one place to take a shit. Because wow. people that read books don't often shit. And when they do, they don't want anyone to know about it. Right. Oh, my God. You know, I'm trying to think now because when I worked as a substitute teacher, I worked near an outdoor mall that was actually walking distance, and I hated using the staff restrooms because there was always a line, and they were, you know, you know, it was just... But the teachers... It was the teacher's restroom, the staff yeah. restroom. So I opened the door. No and one poops if, grosser than a teacher. Right. No. I'm just saying if it was, you know, I once went into one. It was gross when I got in. It's, you know, it smelled horrible. I got out, and then, boom, there's, like, the one hot teacher there, and she thinks I stunk up the joint, and it, that just wasn't the case, but whatever. Uh, you know, I used to go a lot to a place you mentioned just a uh, while ago, Sabaros. The borrows, oh. you know, you know, you go to a fine because you can just shit on the floor of a Sabaro. So no, one no. Notices. <laughs> you go to a, an authentic Italian restaurant like Sabaros. When you're you know. there, your family. <laughs> exactly, and when you're family, you can just go right into the restroom. Actually, there was one point where I had to stop going, and it was these two Spanish women working there. And I say Spanish, I don't see, uh, you know, ethnicity, color, but yeah. But they were talking in Spanish. That's why I have to mention that. So they were talking in Spanish when I went to use the restroom, and they were saying, you know, you know, never, you know, no, he never compra anything. He he just using the bathroom. You know, they were, they were talking. They were talking bad about me while I was using the restroom there. So I had to buy a pizza just to like show them, like, hey, you know what? I am. I was gonna buy something. You know, I am buying something. I just didn't come to use the bathroom, and I wasn't that hungry, and I got. I got stuck with a pizza. And so. you got food poisoning from Sbarro's. <laughs> oh, no, no. So Sbarro's was my favorite place to take a dump and teach, if you must ask. 
Scott I'm Sweeney you, asked, shamed. Paul Blart one or two? I, I don't. I guess I'm gonna have to go with one because it was such a creative idea the first time. <laughs> <laughs> Peanut Blart and Jelly. That's the, what I remember from Paul Blart one. I would have liked to have seen some innovation in the second. Yeah. <laughs> I think the second one, they go to a conference, uh, and it's kind of like, uh, it's an international affair, I think, and his daughter is going to be in college, and she doesn't want to leave him because mom died, and I think he's getting honored at a banquet. I don't remember that well. I have, like, bits and pieces, but uh, it's more than I remember about Paul Blart 1. So, you know what? Uh, my answer is Paul Blart 2. But I just want there to be a third so we can close this off altogether. There are so uh, many unanswered questions. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Anyways, uh, Shampoodler, uh, that's at Shampoodler, a big Jack AM guy. Mm. Um, what are your fa- what are what what smut magazines are you bringing to a deserted island? Oh, it's got to be Gallery magazine. For gallery? Me. What's Gallery? Well, Gallery is. Uh, it's kind of one of the smaller, lower budget smut mags. Okay. I Are hope it's responsible. I hope it still exists. But one time, a bunch of buddies of mine and I went to a local liquor store where the gallery girl next door of the month was signing her issue, and we sure all got an autographed <laughs> picture of her. Nice, nice, nice. I used to rip magazines out of Seven Eleven, uh, and you know, go home and do things. But you know. Uh, I, my magazine would be... Uh, I did a, that, too. I, <laughs> I stole The Economist. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah? Yeah. Smart man. Smart man ripping pages out The Economist. I, <laughs> I would just say Stuff Magazine. That yeah. was. That's what led to Maxim. There's no Maxim you, without, without Stuff. stuff. Yeah. Well, and that's why they often say that Stuff is the grandfather of the smut gentleman's magazine ah right the classy pervert that's where eliza dushku really shined to the yeah. brightest was in those pages oh yeah oh my god yeah we're gonna have to we're gonna have to do a bing image search later for that one there uh mike uh gaper no that can't be right mike gapper gapper uh, yeah yeah i'm glad you didn't rhyme it with anything he the says what fapper. was it like when <laughs> what was it like when Franklin was born and were you there? <laughs> were you there when I was born, Uncle Howard? Well, I was. I was there, as a matter of fact. I was the one who delivered you. Thank you. Yeah, I was. Uh, I did a brief stint as a doctor. Uh, you a brief stint as a doctor? I was a doctor for about three and a half months. You have to go to school to be a doctor. Not the way I do it. <laughs> But, but they caught on pretty quick. Uh, there was a lot of questions about prescriptions that were being written mm-hmm. by me, and uh, they did a little investigation into it, and uh, it turned out that you need a license to be a doctor, and that really, uh, really made things difficult for me. Yeah, for that a would while. make. Yeah, yeah. It was really hard. Malpractice to pay off. is that even malpractice, or do only doctors get mal? mal- real doctors get malpractice suits. It was just practice. <laughs> it was just practice. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I just want to run by these guys. So, uh, well, if I can't answer that question because, yes, I, I was there. How do I remember it? I'm, I'm sure it was delightful. Uh, I guess the final <laughs> question, it was uh, by Harpo Garza. Oh, great legit guy. Legit friend of the show here. Good guy. What's your favorite Jason Biggs movie? Oof. All right. How, do you, how, how does one answer that? Well, there's this really good one that I've seen. It's about two and a half minutes long, and it's just him wearing a little hunter's cap, and this band's playing wearing one of your little bucket hats, and then it's over, and Mira Servino's in it. <laughs> I call her Mina Suvari. Mm, okay, you, easy there, easy. You can call See what her you around. what you watch uh, is a music video, not a movie, and that movie, it, the, those clips were from Loser. And, yeah, that wasn't a movie, but, you know what, close enough, man. You know, I'm not going to grill you. You know, you, you had a real answer. It was, it was a music video for Teenage Dirtbag. I'm going to go with uh, uh, some, something that people want to say. Saving Silverman, legit great movie. 
You know, the wonderful was, is it Amanda Peet or Jennifer Connelly? I never know with those two. So how can I be a racist if I can't <laughs> tell the difference between Amanda Peet and Jennifer Connelly? You know? I'm not. That's that's a really easy distinction to make for me. Well, you see, you know, because I, I don't see race. Yeah. So, you know what? Uh, RogerEbert.com gave Saving Silverman half a star. Roger Ebert, the same Roger Ebert who said, Friends don't let jackasses drive drunk when Ryan Dunn passed away via unknown causes that we'll never know for sure. But uh, I, I don't know what they are, do you? I don't know. I know he, I know he was drunk. Uh, I know he was driving. I don't see how that's related to how he passed away because he was fine. Plenty Literally of people hours are driving drunk died. all the time and don't die. <laughs> well, we don't recommend ever doing that. We don't ever, ever do it, but I'm just saying it's of happening. Of course. And it's not killing people or else it wouldn't be a big deal. Right. Uh, you know, funny, nobody talks about all the times people drive drunk and uh, don't die. Hmm. It, it okay. feels... A little convenient. Like it feels a little convenient, and, and not just that. Roger Ebert has the nerve to punch down at the Jackass crew. You know, uh, so there's more honor in dying of you know losing your jaw and cancer than the mysterious unknown causes that killed Ryan Dunn. I'm sorry. Yeah. Bit. Neither of them asked for it. Neither of them asked for it. And have a little compassion, Ebert. Yeah. It, hey, Ebert, have a in little in hell. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. We got to be better than him. When yeah. Roger, what's the old saying that Michelle Obama said during the Trump campaign? When or, Roger Ebert goes low, we go high. We go high. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I'm glad you picked up on that rather quickly. That's uh, one of the most beautiful things I've ever heard anybody <laughs> say. When Roger Ebert goes low, we go high. So, Roger Ebert, Mr. Half Star for Saving Silverman. Uh, I mean, I'm not closing the show, but, you know, I'm going to do this a little bit prematurely. Wow, nothing. <laughs> wow. I'm going to do this prematurely. Uh, Roger Ebert, go fuck yourself. Uh, but the show is not done. Nobody uh, stopped the play button on their uh, tape decks there. Because Wait, I you're going to come prematurely? <laughs> <laughs> there we go. There it is. Delayed reaction. Delayed reaction by Uncle Howard. R Roger Ebert can go fuck himself. You know what? I want to be controversial for a moment. This is bring it the, on. This is the the this podcast is anti Roger Ebert. Hey, can I say ain't, that? This ain't your Nana's podcast. This, this ain't Roger Ebert's podcast either. <laughs> Roger Ebert, you want to give half a star to Saving Silverman? Eat shit. You know? He said, this is the kind of movie that gives even its defenders fits of desperation. Fuck out of here, man. Well, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, dude. Oh, sorry, Ebert. Not every movie can be Apocalypse Now. Ten hours <laughs> of a shot of a jungle, you dumb dick. Sometimes people just want to laugh and have a good time with Jason Biggs. Right, with Jason Biggs, Steve Zahn, Jack Black. Ever heard of him? Uh, Jack Black, ever heard of him? Yeah, kind of a big star. So, yeah. Anyways, moving on. Those are the, I'm done with the questions. Those, uh, our fans are terrific people. Keep them yeah. coming. Keep them coming. Just like, uh, oh. Yeah, just like the ladies just and like the, the this... guys keep me coming. Yeah, you're always, uh, yeah, you're always doing big that. Big Aiden. <laughs> big Aiden. <laughs> Big Aiden, Jesus Christ. Uh, is General Electric going to be uh, jealous if he finds out about Big Aiden? General Electric and me are just friends. Okay, General. What's he been up to lately? I've been seeing him just kind of going back and forth to the C-Store. Oh, uh, well, he's been uh, finding some good places to hide underneath people's houses lately. Mm -hmm. uh, he's a small you man. Know, you know he does communicate with possums quite clearly and uh, efficiently, and he has been uh, amassing an army of possums. You know, and I heard that army is sent to attack the general from the commercials of Shaq. The uh, I, uh, I guess he's the auto insurance general. Yes, that's right. So he wants to. So General Electric wants to attack the general. 
Uh, that is a because 3D rendering, is what I tried to explain to General Electric. For those that don't know, General Electric is the man who siphons off uh, electricity uh, around the block in our neighborhood. It's how we have electricity. It's how we have power to uh, run these computers and microphones. You know, it's not how it's not how we get on the airwaves, Uncle Howard. This is not a radio show. But General Electric, um, he's got. Well, some I know issues. he's not a radio man. He's just an electricity man. <laughs> just. Thank you. I'm glad our audience got clarification. So I want to talk a big scandal right now. You ready for some scandal, Uncle Howard? Oh, I do love that show. No, I'm talking about real life, real people, not actors who are liars. I'm talking there's been some photos, there's some been some videos about a friend of ours. Our friend, there's some leaked photos of sleeves getting... Screen a screenshot blocked by the big dogs. Uh, big dogs clothing brand block sleeves. The photos are everywhere, and the scan. You know, it's, it's it's a bit much. This is the talk of the internet right now. It's on TMZ. It's on the blogs. It's on Twitter. Everyone's talking about it left and right. How can a good guy get blocked by a, a really a reputable clothing brand? Big dogs. Now that. As you know, at least 87% of my wardrobe is big dogs or big right. dog related. Absolutely uh, is. The other 13% is Tommy Bahama, and I've made no secret of that. It's on a lot of public records. Yeah. <laughs> it's, uh, on, it's on official <laughs> public documents. You're right. On a lot of police reports as well. But if big dogs, and this, you can put this out there with my name and thumbprint on it. If big dogs doesn't unblock this man, I'm never going to buy another Big Dog's t-shirt unless it's about 9-11. <laughs> wow. Bold statement by Uncle Howard. While wow. the NFL players take a knee, Uncle Howard takes a stance. I take a knee and I take the D. <laughs> you'll take a D. You'll, get, you'll, take, you'll have some V as well. I know you're very... You're I'm very, pan. Uh, yeah, you're pansexual. I'm I'm pansexual, I'm pan-fried, and I'm pandemonium, ready to be unleashed upon your bedtimes. Yeah, I, I could feel that. I mean, I don't want to. I don't want to see it. I don't want to You're not going to. You're my, you're my blood. <laughs> I appreciate that. I appreciate that. I don't ever want to share any young women or big agents with you. Anyways, there's another scandal. Now that we're on a scandal uh, a beat right here, a bunch of scandals are going on, I learned... Uh, a few years ago, during John McCain's presidential campaign, Heidi Montag of the Hills endorsed John McCain. This is disgusting. How do you, I mean, Heidi, 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 Heidi. This is, this is, you don't do something like this and not expect a backlash. You know, this is not a, you know, this is a warmonger, and I understand he, he is with Roger Ebert as we speak, but, uh, John McCain, Roger Ebert, these aren't good guys. I, I'm not gonna say they're actively bad men, but you can't endorse these kind of, you know, these kind of cowards. You, I am issuing, since Big Dogs wants to lead the way in, in you know, blocking people. I'm gonna, I'm gonna boycott Heidi Montag, and I'm not gonna watch any movie, any show she's on from here on out after this until she takes away that endorsement. Well, uh, number one, what I'm going to do is I'm going to boycott John McCain. Okay. Beca because that's where it all starts. That's where it all starts, yeah. Yeah, no more John McCain. Uh, I'm unfollowing him on Twitter. I um, unfollow, unfollow him right now. I don't think um, I don't think he'll mind that one too much. I, <laughs> I'm definitely going to sell all of my John McCain merchandise. I do own a hat of John McCain. You, you do, actually. I know that to be true. <laughs> you know that to be true. I'll post that as the preview photo for our episode. Uh, <laughs> but, um, yeah, I am boycott. I am off. I am asking our fans to boycott Heidi Montag until she, pull, you know, endorses somebody else, just not John McCain. So, But... I do want it noted, though, that Spencer is completely cool with us. Oh, no, yeah, yeah. This is, look, look, you could be, you could be anti-Heidi and still be pro-Spencer, because that man yeah. loves his crystals and all kinds of stuff like that. S Spencer, if you're listening in right now, just know that we have no beef with you. Yeah, 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 yeah. This show is uh, anti-Roger Ebert, and it's anti-Heidi Montag, but uh, Spencer Pratt, 
Uh, we stand with Spencer Pratt right now, and uh, you know we don't want any backlash to go his way. Hashtag Spencer Pratt strong. Get it trending, people. Spencer Pratt strong. That is beautiful. That is beautiful. You know, and we have to go from the beautiful and somebody like Spencer, and we're to close the show with the ugly, the the Louis C.K. comeback. But not just Louis C.K. C- comeback. I feel like it's connected to another guy, Fred Armisen, who's untouchable as a creep. How, what, what do you think of Louis performing again, Uncle Howard? I think it's high time. The man has paid his dues. He's, his dues. he's suffered like very few other humans have ever since the existence of humanity. And it's so inspiring to see how brave he is to come back and act like nothing ever happened and that his life was not ruined. Yeah. Yeah, uh, that is that is a way to look at it. You know, on the other hand, he admitted to what he did. He Brave not, of him. Mm, 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 eh, not so much. <laughs> Fred Armisen also, you know, takes no, no shame in what he's done. I mean, as far as, you know, just kind of saying he's, like, bad with women or whatever, allegedly. I don't know. Well, I mean, ba- bad with women, if that's a crime, then uh, send basically all of us and everyone who's ever listened to our podcast to prison forever. Jesus Christ. Okay. Well, I might not be good with women, but I, I, I do have, you know, the utmost respect and, you know. Uh, uh, you're saying he's bad with the women in the way that, like, uh, a killer whale's bad with seals. Right. Exactly. I exactly. Got... So, okay, so you 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 admire Louis. I mean, I don't I don't I feel the only reason you admire Louis is because you have a similar rap sheet you if you're banned from the XFL. And now you're just going to come back to the XFL like you never did things under your poncho. It's a new XFL. It's a new it? XFL. <laughs> but yeah. it's the it's the it's the old Louis CK. It's not the new, you know. Well, maybe if I he grew w- some hair. I don't know that he has not Have you seen recent footage of him? Maybe if he grew some hair and, and, and bought a pair of dockers and got, you know, got a, get a haircut I could set my watch to, like Johnny Unitas. You know, the thing about this Louis C.K. cat is I, I think it was just a convenient way for America to decide that's enough of you. <laughs> right. Wasn't right. It, wasn't that, everybody kind of sick of him by the time this happened anyway? That, that it, I mean, well, look, 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 look. I don't even want to, like, joke, like, like I like, like like I would no, it, sympathize with what he's done because he is gross. I think Louis C.K. is fucking gross, but yes, at the same time, he he kind of sucked, you know. He kind of sucked, and and I guess in some ways, in some ways, I will validate your point and say, yeah, we we were kind of tired of him, and you know, I think maybe some people were like, hey, not only do you suck, you know, now that you suck. And have nothing to offer us. Now we're now gonna be we're angry. gonna destroy you. Yeah. Hey, look, you're yeah, you're not funny anymore or whatever. You know what? Hey, you happen to be a creep, so get the you know get the fuck out of here. You know. I mean, I love you, Daddy. As uh, me and the Bugman have uh, you know, we have our I love you, Daddy on VHS. It's the only way to watch it. Go to the go uh, ahead and buy it. Yeah. Go to the uh, Bugavista Market, uh, Bugman TV. Anyways, we compare that to a bank robber. Coming back to the scene of the crime and jerking off all over it, essentially, after escaping with the money already. And Louis got away with his crimes but was so open about it, he, you know, he basically got him. He, he played himself, as uh, the late DJ Khaled would say, you know. Life imitates art. Yes, that it does. So I think we'll close it off here, Uncle Howard. I think we've... Uh, Covered a lot of ground. We established we oh, are. Oh, I've anti- covered a lot of things. Yeah, uh, gross. With what your loads? <laughs> mm, loads wow. of something. Loads of something. Beautiful, absolutely beautiful. Uncle Howard, it's good to have you back. It's good to be back. Hey, let's tell them all of our uh, uh, internet shit. That oh going yeah, on I'm at Bug off. TV Franklin, and you are Miata guy for you. We are on Facebook. Search for Pillow Talk with Franklin and Uncle Howard. We are on SoundCloud. You're, we're on some method you're listening iTunes, to us. iTunes. We should be on Stitcher soon. Spotify we're working on. But we're not that hard to find. I mean, if you're listening it, to us now, Mission Accomplished, George W. Bush style. If you Tell, your, tell your friends about us. Buy hey, our shirt on Teespring. 
buy our shirt on Teespring. It's really cool looking, actually. And uh, we are going to have stickers coming out soon. Uh, I'll let you guys know when I find out more about it. But I'll probably send them to you for free. But if you want to give us a little donation to keep this on the air, that'd we'll be take cool. It. That would be cool. Stickers for all. I appreciate that. Stickers for all, but if you can help, you can help. You can help. Hey, look, you know, I know a lot. Like, I was a big proponent in the Big Help success, you know. That's right. And now I might be paying for it, and so that's it's another issue. But, look, if you want to help us out, uh, we'll, be, we'll continue to release that content. We're going to have some guests soon, actually. You know who I was speaking to today? Uh, Julian Yuri Rodriguez. The he big man be, himself. The big man himself from uh, MTV's, uh, what was it called? No Seasons. I, if, you know, I think that's what it was called. Uh, didn't watch it. Good guy, though. Julian he on, Yuri. He was on Liquid Television. He played that real skinny girl who got killed a lot of times. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sure. He's going to be on. He's going to be our next guest. We're going to have guests is what I'm trying to say so eloquently tonight, you guys. We're going to have a lot of guests. We, we're trying to work and book Kate Raft. So a lot of exciting things coming our way on Pillow Talk. But uh, I've been in talks with uh, Meryl Streep's people, so that seems pretty good. Oh, have you? Yeah. That's good. That's good. Is it just harassing requests for photos of her feet, or is it actual talks about getting her on the show? Well, I don't know if we mean her people so much as a uh, police officer that her publicist called on me, but I feel like that's pretty close to the same thing, and I'm just, I got hopes that we're going to get her on the show. You're like two degrees uh, Kevin Bacon away from actual, actually speaking to Meryl Streep, so that's uh, good for you. It's a lot closer than a lot of people are. Hey, and on that note, mission accomplished, and go fuck yourself. Digging it, dig, dig it it all. Break it, dig, dig, dig it it, dig, dig it it all. Digging it, dig, digging it, dig, digging it all.